trap, 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 trap. <laughs> Hola mi gente, so today's session 20, uh, if you're seeing now my background, you know, I lit it as it is, I want to put the uh, Galactic Talk background, which you know, uh, my place where I'm at, that's how it is, so just to let you know, it's 12, you know, a.m., so session 20, uh, we have Fierce Truth Seeker in the building, all right, so <laughs> right. Fierce Truth Seeker, Welcome, brother. Welcome, mi hermano. Uh, hey, peace, peace. It's a pleasure of being here, man. You know what? With Truth Seeker, we're, we're going to tackle his bio. I came to the Moorish paradigm, and we're going to tackle, you know, some occult mysteries in terms of history, you know, and probably some mysteries. But what can what, the things that truth can disclose? So, without further ado, truth, the ball is in your camp. Tell us, you know, your bow, please, and how you came to the Moorish poet paradigm. Okay. Um, greetings, Islam. Um, yeah, basically, I came into, well, before I was involved with um, the Moorish science, I was actually, um, well, I have a background um, in the uh with the garveyites um and at the same time because i was born um knowing my indigenous ancestry um so at the time when i was with the garveyites i was also doing studies on my indigenous um culture and stuff like that, heritage, um, you know, kind of following up on stuff that I, information that I got from my grandparents and things like that. Um, so at one point I started um, studying shamanism, um, American Indian shamanism. I was an apprentice to a shaman. Okay. And um I would say basically the way that I got into it was, I would say that really the ancestors were really um, guiding me along my path, along the different avenues that I was taking in terms of knowledge and things of that nature. Um, I was taking uh, martial arts at one point, and this is before I got on the shamanic path. Um, my martial arts instructor came to me one day and he said, oh, I have that information about the shaman for you. And I said, really? Um, I, I, I didn't ask you about any information about a shaman. And what was interesting is that uh, the way that I found what he said interesting is because I was reading this book. I was reading this book at the time. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see that in your see this book in your. Sure. Could you could you could you uh, spell out the uh, the title, please? I'm seeing it, but just for the people. Okay. Yes. Um, shamanism and the mystery lines, ley lines, spirit paths, shape shifting, and out of body travel. Okay, and. So around the same time that he asked me that, he said, I have that information for you about the shamanism. And so uh, I found that very, I said, I didn't ask you anything about a shaman. So I just, I said, hey, but I'll take the information, you know? And so I followed up, I made a phone call and I scheduled an appointment. And from that point on, I was, um, you know, doing an apprenticeship to a shaman learning Native American shamanism, okay? Um, and so during that time, I was very heavy, um, studying, um, indigenous language, um, indigenous culture, um, things of that nature, um, going to powwows, stuff like that. And so what happens is, um, you know, I became 
you know, very active, you know, um, doing, um, doing, putting, doing things in the community, um, putting on lectures and things of that nature, um, dealing with um, indigenous heritage. What was real funny though, is one time we threw a lecture at this place in Brooklyn called the Universal Temple of Thoughts. It was a, um, it was a metaphysical temple. Um, and the, um, the, 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 the bishop there, uh, he was a heavy metaphysician and he was letting us utilize his, we were studying under him and also he was letting, it was a group of young people, you know, um, around my age at the time. And he was letting us utilize this because he had a lot of space, a lot of space, many floors. Um, and he taught out of the place, but he had place space that he wanted to rent out to the community. Um, and so we were helping him clean out the space and things of that nature. So we started having a lecture series there. And so one time we did something dedicated to indigenous American shamans. Okay, and we invited people there from the indigenous community. Um, and also a lot of Moors came, okay. And so at that time, you know, I was familiar with the Moors, but I didn't have a whole lot of information about the Moors. Cause I went, when I started hearing Moors talk, you know, I didn't agree with a lot of what they were saying. So, you know, I was like, oh, these Moors are crazy, you know? And um, so, you know, they came and they were speaking and they were dropping a lot of science, you know? Uh, we had one sister from the indigenous community that was speaking at that particular lecture. And what was so funny is that the bishop who owned the temple, his brother um, could see, he was a seer. So he could see spirits and things like that. And so after the program was over, he came to my, he came to me and some of the other younger cats that was with us um, in the group. And he said, he said, brother, he came to me, he said, brother, I just wanted to tell you that you brothers brought down, and that's how he talked, he had a very whispery voice, say, brother, I just wanted to tell you, you guys brought down some heavy, heavy ancestral spirits. He said, I, can, I could see them. And then so he looks at me and he says, and you know, those spirits, those Native American spirits that you brought down, he say, they were black. He used the term black, you know, because that's the term that they're familiar with, obviously. And so he's, and then I said, oh, okay. And they say, he said, no, no, no. He said, listen to me. He say, no. Those Indians were black. Y'all brought down those ancestral spirits. And um, so I was just, you know, taking it in. And so around that same time, I run into um, brother um, Phil Valentine. Hmm. So at, uh, real, shout out to him because he did sure, you know, brought a lot of influences to a lot of generations so yes he did Bill Valentine yeah Go yes ahead. he did and so he had um this was at a Kwanzaa event um the every year they used to have a Kwanzaa event at boys and girls high school in Brooklyn and so um he was giving out flyers because he used to do these um juice fast and stuff like that, you know, um, with people that was involved with this temple and things like that. And so he walks up to me and he gives me a flyer. He says, hey, brother, you know, and he says, um, you know, come down and, um, you know, say we're doing like a 21 day fast, you know, uh, I think it was 21. It was, uh, I know it was something like that, 21 or 30 or something. Um, and, um, you know, he starts talk to, talking to me about health and wellness. And then he starts talking about, um, you know, he started, you know, dropping a little bit of science that the Moors talk about, you know, he says, you know, um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, they think that our solution is to go back to Africa, you know, 
And um, he said, but you know, that's not really a solution. You know, it's dropping a, a lot of the, what, what the Moors are saying about, you know, our people being here and this, that and the other. And he said, come out to, you know, come out to check us out. You know, he said, we're gonna have a, a gathering of the masters, you know, all kind of people, metaphysicians and stuff like that are coming out. So, you know, I'm, I'm all ears, you know, he was saying, he was dropping a lot of stuff that, um, you know, cause I was more on the militant tip at that time. You know, even though I was studying, you know, the shamanism, but I was fairly new to it, but I was mainly coming out of, you know, you know how when you're young, you know, you're a college student, you know, you know, you, you just, you just ready to tear up the world, you know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, so I, I, I took him up on that and I went to the Gathering Mass and he had everybody coming to the Gathering Mass, Bobby Hemet, um, Hakeem Bay, Nakeem Bay, um, you name it, um, uh, just about everybody in the community. Yeah that you can think of, you know? Yeah. And so at the lecture, I hear Hakeem Bey speak. And what blew me away about Hakeem is that Hakeem, when he, see at that time, there was no, it wasn't like now how you have the internet and stuff like that, you know? Um, at that time, you know, you go to the lectures and you get a tape. You know, <laughs> you get a VHS tape. <laughs> you know, not even the DVD at that time. You either got a, a VHS tape or you got like this right here, a cassette tape. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> cassette. This is a real cassette here. <laughs> you know, you got either a cassette or you got a VHS. Um, no digital analog, you know. So... Um, you know, and Hakeem came and he used to come with his slide projector, you know, before we had everything was digital, you had like a, a real slide projector where you would, they would uh, laminate, you know, pieces of paper and it would be on a clear transparent uh, mm -hmm. sheet yeah. and you put it down on this thing and it, it projects an image on the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so he would have his projector there and he would show all of these images of these Moors and, you know, indigenous people and how they look just like what they call today African-American, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latin, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, I was just blown away because, you know, I'm um, very visual, you know, um, when it comes to um, learning and absorbing information. So, I mean, that hit home for me because, you know, he had the visuals and they say a picture is worth a thousand words, you know? Yeah. So I was, I was like, man. So at that point, you know, I was um, starting to take what these Moors are saying a little bit more serious, you know, because before, you know, I was like, these Moors are crazy, man. I, I, I was doing research to prove that the Moors were wrong in what they were saying. But the more that I researched, the more that I found out that the Moors were right on point with what they were saying, you see? Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I start to do more research and I start to, I get national, I got nationalized through Hakeem Bay. Um, and I um, also received his um, Moorish adept lessons, you know, so, I became exposed to, you know, that adept wisdom um, of the Moorish science. And so, you know, once I got those adept lessons, it, that was it, you know. And I, um, like him, you know, I started doing more research um, because at that time, you know, there wasn't um, a whole lot of information like how we have today. You know, you have so much information due to the internet and stuff like that. So, you know, in its infant state, I mean, don't get me wrong, there was a, a lot of information back then, you know, um, and I definitely got to, you know, credit people like Hakeem Bay and also Jose Pimienta Bay uh, oh, yeah. as well, you know, because I started getting tapes from Jose Pimienta Bay and studying his lectures and stuff like that. And, um, you know, same thing with him. You know, he always presented a lot of visuals and things of that nature in his lectures. And so um, at that point, um, I start to study the, because I'm also studying my indigenous um, 
culture, you know, all the cultural aspects, you know, the history and stuff like that, the spiritual aspect. And so um, I saw in the more science where, you know, they would say that the, um, the five civil, there's a connection between the five civilized tribes and um, the five um, types of moors, the, the Isles, the Ills, the Ali's, the Bays, the Days, you know. So I'm like, hmm, let me look a little bit deeper into that. And there was another brother um, around that same time. They had a group called the Unknown Brothers. And they used to have a lecture series around that same time um, up in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a brother, um, a brother named Colin, um, who was uh, Dr. Um, Gabriel, um, Dr. Gabriel, Oh, um, oh, let me, let me um, I might be butchering his name, Oyibo or something like that. I don't want to butcher his name, Gabriel um, Obio, but his, his son's name is Colin. And yeah. um, so it was, it was him and um, uh, um, um, Professor Simmons's son um, and a brother named um, Mahir, Il. Mm -hmm. And um, um, uh, Professor Simmons' son, uh, Reg, uh, Reggie, um, and they used to they used to have a lecture series, and they used to bring all kind of people through uh, C. Freeman L., um, Hakeem Bay, Dr. Delbert Blair, you know, all kind of people they used to bring there to do um, lectures. You know, um, I've sat with C. Freeman L. in person. You know, um, Bill with him. You know, like all night. You know and stuff like that, pick his brain, you know, that's and a cosmic, uh, that's a cosmic teacher right there. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so I start and and the brother, um, the brother, uh, Mahir L, who was also part of that group called the Unknown Brothers, he used to always, um, he used to always rock a turban. And um, he used to always talk about the connection with the indigenous and the Moors as well. So that really resonated with me, you know, um, because, you know, that was, you know, um, my heritage that um, I was, you know, really studying up on, you know, and getting more deep into. And so, you know, his message definitely resonated with me very well. And so I kind of um, started studying even deeper than what he was doing. and. and and studying the connections and seeing that, oh, well, so the Moors and the indigenous people are like one and the same people. Mm -hmm. That's what I find out through my research, okay? Then, you know, I start finding out that, well, you know, there's Moors, there's tribes called, there's different, there's a whole bunch of different tribes that are called Moors. Then I find out um, that uh, when you look at certain tribes, their traditional um, attire, their uh, regalia looks just like the Moors over in the East, okay? Um, certain tribes you see, they rock the fez. Certain tribes you see with the turban, just like over in the East. So I'm looking at all these connections. So I start, you know, just compiling all kind of information. I'm looking at, you know, and also I'm looking at tribes here called Mandinka. Like there's a tribe um, in Central America called the Mandinkas that are so old that they are classified as an indigenous tribe. Also in North America, there's also um, a tribe called the Mandinkas, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at all of these, you know, uh, another tribe called Mecca, called the Mecca Indians, you know? Um, and I'm looking at other tribes that, you know, have um, comedic elements um, in their language and stuff like that, you know? Um, and just coming across all kinds of information, you know? So I started to, um, started to do a lot of writing. I started putting out journals you know, and making those journals um, available to the public. I used to sell them. I used to vend out in Harlem, 
um, back in the days. I still vend um, out in Harlem, um, you know, from time to time, you know, vend at all the cultural events and, you know, Sarnetta's events and stuff like that, you know. And um, so I get really, you know, I'm just like gung ho about this whole Moorish thing. And now to go back to the spiritual aspect, um, when I was doing my research, I would go in the library and the ancestors would just lead me to books that just gave me all the answers that I was looking for, you know? Yeah. Um, and then um, I would just meet people um, on the street that would just give me clues, you know? And everything would just fall in place, you know, by just meeting people, talking to people. Um, I go to powwows, you know, meet family there and stuff like that, you know? Um, and being that I was a, a book distributor as well, you know, I had in my possession thousands of books mm -hmm. and, you know, um, metaphysical books. I used to have all, I used to be at the lectures with all the metaphysical books, you know, even if you look at some old um, videos from like back in the nineties and stuff like that, you'll hear people referencing me in their lectures and stuff like that. And as the man in the back with the books, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now, um, you know, I start studying, um, you know, to, to get a little bit, I know you wanted to know a little bit about um, um, my background. Um, yes. So, yeah, so basically um, my background, I have a background definitely um, in, um, as, as I told you before, shamanism, you know, um, metaphysics, um, uh, Rosicrucianism. Um, I got a background in, um, in the Yoruba, um, Palo and, you know, things of that nature. Um, just about all kind of, um, uh, uh, of the spiritual systems that you can think of, you know, I've been part of it, you know, and others too, you know, as well. Right on. Um, let's see. Um, so you can, you can, you can pretty much say I'm, I'm basically, um, a, 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 a student of more science, you know, um, I have also, um, been on the continent, um, of Africa, um, doing, um, on a fact finding mission, doing research there. Um, I lived there for, you know, a little while as well. Um, so you know, my knowledge is, is, is um, you know, it, it's pretty holistic, you know. Um, you know, I've got the knowledge from, you know, the, the, in terms of the indigenous um, side, as well as also the knowledge of, you know, the, the African history and stuff like that, you know. I'm pretty versed in that, pretty versed in comedics. I used to take... Um, I used to take classes at the um, Osiraset Society out here in Brooklyn. Um, you know, Osiraset Society, um, that's the society that um, Raul Nefer Amin, who wrote the yeah. books, uh, the Medu Netter books and other books, you know, he had a group uh, called the Osiraset Society. I remember um, that, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I used to go to their, um, you know, their rituals and stuff like that, take classes. They would have classes and um, things like that right out here in Brooklyn on uh, Bedford Place um, back in the days, you know. Um, I also have a family, um, a family lineage um, of people who were um, uh, um, medicine people, okay, um, in, my, um, in my lineage. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And um, so, you know, basically I've just been following up on all of, you know, that ancestral wisdom, you know. Um, and is anything, I know you had a couple of other things you wanted me to touch yeah, on as well. And also to the, to the people. So that's really an introduction of who Fierce Truth Secret is. Pierce, bro, you mentioned Jose Pimienta, right? Mm-hmm. I want to share a shout out to, you know, our 
for people that speak Spanish o para que usted lo sepa, porque José Pimiento, era como era, o todavía es también una, un personaje como muy importante, porque él realmente hizo un trabajo enorme, enorme y enseñando a la gente, ¿entiende? Todo sobre la, la cultura indígena, pero también quién eran los moros. So, shout out to Jose Pimienta. So, bro, right away, let's go, man. You're pretty, you're pretty fluent. Uh, what, what, um, what, um, what, what uh, country are you from? Yo, you know what I'm saying? I live, you know, in Canaan, so. Oh, you're in Canaan. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, my pedigree is from the island. You know what I'm saying? So. Which, uh, which island? Speaking French, Creole, so shout out to Nice, me. nice. Shout out to IIT. I got to shout out as well, you know, to uh, my, uh, my, my people from the Dominican Republic, Cuba, so shout out to all of you. So, yeah. Nice. French, Spanish, so that's what it is. So. Yeah. We're gonna yeah, go my, my, my family lineage um, is also um, from Latin America as well on my maternal side. So you know what, bro? Uh, share this with us and, you know, talk about that history of your lineage from your mom's side. Well, my mom's side is from um, the island of St. Vincent. Shout out, shout out to the people yeah. from St. Vincent, yeah. Um, and um, as you know, um, a lot of people from St. Vincent, you had a lot of people who migrated from other parts. Um, so some of my ancestors um, were people who uh, came from uh, Venezuela um, and also from Portugal as well um, on my mother's uh, paternal side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's as, well, as well as um, we also have um, the Moorish um, element as well um, on on her um, paternal lineage, um, and we also have the um, indigenous um, line on my great grandmother, great grandmother's side, um, on my grandmother's side rather. Um, I will we trace it through our my great grandmother um twice removed um and the people of that island um the original people of that island um were the um Kalinago, um Arawak, um the people that you call Garifuna. Yeah. They um originally um came from St. Vincent, which is my other island. I mean to my mother's um island and then they branched off to places like Honduras, you know um, and other places in Central America. So that's what's up. So, hey, so brother. Now, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So what's interesting, when we talk about Moorish um, in terms of uh, my mother's country, what's interesting about that is that her country, the Aboriginal name for that country um, is, is two names that the indigenous people gave to that um, island, um, Hiruna and Yurome. Say that again, bro. Uh, Haruna and Yurome. Okay. And Haruna is a West African Islamic or Moorish name. So you see the Moorish connection there. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Got, got you. And uh, you spoke about, you know, from your mom, Venezuela, and, uh, well, her lineage, you know. Venezuela, all that area. So, because right, it's right there, right, right. It's, exactly. it's a quick boat ride from that island, exactly. <laughs> right off of South America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, bro, I know uh, people from that area. Actually, any uh, words or any? Uh, how would you, you know, um, assist them? Or you know, now on the show, if the people wants to know more about, you know, the indigenous uh, narratives, anyone's from the island specifically, could you share any tips or, you know, advices? Sure. Um, so in terms of the islands, um, so you have, um, you have um, Haruna, um, you know, you also have um, in, Cuba, um, 
you, you know, the, the, the early explorers there described that they found mosques, you know, they found a mosque in Cuba, you know, um, and you also have uh, certain places in the islands um, and in Central America where you have people who have Moorish names, like for instance, um, you have the um, the, uh, uh, um, the 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 people in um, Central America um, that speak languages that were found to be um, Islamic. Okay, um, you have, and then when you read in Jose Pimienta's book, um, Othello's Children in the New World, you know. Um, he goes into detail, you know, about the, the different tribes that have um, Moorish, um, uh, 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 Moorish elements um, in their language, also tribes with Moorish names, you know, uh, like um, Marabu, you know. Um, you also have, again, you have the Mandinkas, you know, in Central America. Um, Columbus, when he first came, to the Americas, he talked about how the, um, the, 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 the Carib people, he described, he said that they were Mohammedans, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and you find in um, also um, people who were in um, the main, on the mainland um, in North America who were brought to the islands because a lot of people um, think that when they talk about uh, the transatlantic slave trade, they just think about, um, you know, the slave trade coming from, you know, Africa to the Caribbean to North America and things of that nature. But what they don't understand is that um, for the most part, our people were being traded intercontinentally um throughout the from the from the mainland to the caribbean and vice versa and also um um on the mainland you know the different states um as well as um uh, uh, uh south central america you know you also had it going on in south america you That's know uh, even before any africans even came here in 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 in, in a slave trade you see um so you have, say for instance, um, the Pequots in Connecticut, the Pequot tribe. There's plenty of documented evidence of the Pequots um, in, the, in, the, in the 1700s being taken into the island of Bermuda, okay? And even till this day, um, there's, commun there's a community in Bermuda who still um, preserved um, the oral history of their people originally coming to that island from, um, from North America, coming from Connecticut and Long Island, okay? Um, and um, I've actually done an interview with uh, one particular brother who's from Bermuda, but he goes to the powwows, he goes to the, the um, Pequot's powwows, um, every year. And he goes there in honor of his ancestors that were taken from there to Bermuda. You wow. see, also uh, a lot of people that are in Jamaica, you know, um, you know, they have a lot of people in Jamaica, you know, they have the story about, you know, them being originally coming from Ghana, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not denying that there weren't, a, that were that you know, Ghanaians weren't brought to that island. But what's heavily overlooked is the fact that you had indigenous people from the mainland that were also being taken um, to that particular island. For instance, the Yamasi, okay? The Yamasi um, indigenous people uh, were, uh, uh, who were in the South were being taken um, and this is documented. You can look in the congressional records. Um, this is documented um, that they were being taken uh, from the mainland um, in the South 
to Jamaica. Right. Um, and same thing with IET, you know, they were indigenous people from the mainland uh, being taken um, to IIT um, as well. I, matter of fact, I grew up and went to um, went to, to high school with a brother who um, was part Dominican and part Haitian. And he said his mother uh, was Cherokee, but she was um, born in IIT. Mm -hmm. So yep. for the people, so these are examples, you know, the, uh, that's the, we got to say that's, you know, the du jour, the true matter is, or how, you know, indigenous people on this continent were actually traveling, you know, off south to west, east. But these have been supplanted, you know, by, we got to say, you know, part of them fictional, you know, narratives to, you know, to, to hide the truth. So then again, bro, could you uh, probably give like another example you know, or, uh, you know, inter-indigenous inter people who were from this part of the continent, bam, they moved to another place. Yeah. Um, there was an individual, um, he had come to uh, one of the, one of the powwows, I can't remember, it might have, it might have even been the Yamasee powwows, one of the southern powwows that he went to. And he was, um, he took a DNA test and he found relatives that were from North America that had, he was from, I think he was from Trinidad. And he found relatives um, in his DNA. Um, uh, when, you know, when you do DNA, they, they also allow you to see who you're related to. DNA wise, yeah. um, he had DNA relatives that were from North America that had no Caribbean lineage whatsoever. And he was from Trinidad, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's what's up, that's what's up. So I'm glad that you're sharing this to the people because you know, this has to be shared and has to be known, you know? Mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, we can, we can also do a part two when I have my notes in front of me and I can go even deeper into more <laughs> islands. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt we will. So we're gonna make now we switch. So Brother Fierce mentioned shamanism. So we're gonna explore this. So bro, I know what you're allowed to disclose so involving, you know, spirits, uh, shamanism. Please share it to the people, all right? Okay, um, I will do like a, um, like I told you before, I'll do a surface, um, you know, a, a surface introduction um, because, you know, again, when you're initiated into certain systems, you know, obviously the secrets you can't talk about, you know, but, you know, you can give a, um, you know, you can give a, a general background that'll be enough to, you know, um, spark your interest. Um, yeah, so basically, um, the shaman is, well, you got to remember, um, when the colonizers first came here, how did they take possession of the land? And a lot of people, you know, They'll say, oh, well, they went to war and, you know, this, that, and the other. Okay, yeah, that's part of it, but that's not, you know, that's that's only a, only a piece of it. How did they actually possess the land? So what they had to do, they had to consult with the shamans. Okay, so when they consulted with the shamans, then it was the shamans who told them about the layout of the land, okay? So when they came here, they had to learn about where the, where the power points are um, because the earth, just like the human body, has uh, 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 chakras yeah. and meridians, 
okay? So if you learn how to manipulate those power points or like in martial arts, the pressure points, you know, um, you can cause things to happen, okay? So they had to learn where the sacred places were, the sacred places of power, okay? So what they did was when they consulted with the shamans, they learned about um, occupy like certain places or power points. So you have uh, uh, Washington DC, a major power point, a major grid point, okay? Why do you think they, 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 they occupy there? You know, if you occupy certain places, you're going to be forever in power. You know, well, nothing lasts forever, you know, but, you know, you can, you can be in power for a long, because, you know, once you start abusing the power, you know, you could do all the juju, all the, you know, all the medicine that you want, but you begin to play yourself. And, you know, the ancestors will allow you just enough rope to hang yourself, you know, no matter how much um, occult wisdom you've got. But, you know, so far, you know, they've been able to maintain by occupying certain places, um, you know, uh, uh, Washington, D.C., you know, that whole thing is laid out. You know, if you see um, D.C. from an aerial view, you're going to see all kind of symbolism. You know, you're going to see the square, the compasses, you know, you're going to see the pentagram, you know, and all of that stuff, you know, pentagon, pentagram, you know, um, you know, you see the, the you know, they, they have the obelisk, you know, um, you know, all of these things um, are used to harness energy so that they could continue to rule. You see what I'm saying? So they learned where all these sacred, like where you see these cathedrals and stuff like that, you know, those are power points, you know, when you go into certain churches and they're working all kind of miracles and stuff like that, they're on power points. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So of course, you know, you see a lot of miraculous stuff in some churches and things like that. They're thinking, oh, it's the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, Lord, come, uh, come and bring me that bottle of oil <laughs> and say the name of Jesus. <laughs> and you're going to see the mighty hand of God do miracles. <laughs> And what they understand is that, you know, they're using, you know, a lot of them understand these sciences, you know, um, and they're, they're, they're working the land. Yep. They're working the PowerPoints, you know, not to mention that, uh, you know, a lot of them, you know, uh, also, you know, don't think that a lot of them don't understand the occult sciences like, you know, uh, root work and things like that, you know, uh, uh, um, hoodoo and, you know, stuff like that. Don't think that they don't know all that stuff, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, they had to occupy. Uh, they had to get with the shamans, find out the lay of the land, you know? Um, you have um, um, places all over the country, even, you know, um, where you have mounds, that are known, you know, um, people who've been on the mounds talk about um, having um, all kind of spiritual experiences and stuff like that, you know? You um, so yeah, um, sacred places, you want to know about sacred places, you know, of course, um, uh, here in, um, in New York, um, you have places like um, where you see a lot of um, spiritual, for like in the Bronx, in Soundview Park, you know, um, when I was a, a drum, cause I used to do Native American uh, drumming and sing. I used to be um, drum with a group called Iron Feather. Uh, my cousin and uh, my godmother um, started uh, that drum group called Iron Feather that was known, you know, through the, the local powwows, you know, in the tri-state area. Um, and um, so we used to practice in Soundview Park in the Bronx, you know, and 
we would have people talk about how, you know, there's spirits, you know, um, in that park, you know, um, because in Soundview, um, that was originally called um, Sacopins, okay, by the indigenous um, people there, you know. Um, so these are, you know, sacred places where some of these parks and stuff are located. Um, of course, in Long Island, you know, um, a lot of power up there, you know. Um, you know, of course, Amityville, you know, that movie, the Amityville Horror, you know, that was based on a true story, you know, because a lot of these um, suburbs and places where all these rich folk are at, you know, um, these are on burial grounds, indigenous burial grounds. You see what I'm saying? You know, so, you know, a lot of times these spirits get mad and they just, you know, start going buck wild on these people, you know, for occupying their land, yeah. you know. Um, so there's a lot of sacred, there's other sacred places too. Some sacred places um, I won't talk about um, just uh, for the fact that, you know, when you tell too many people, you know, about certain places, you know, that's when it becomes desecrated, you know? So some, some spots I just, you know, uh, will choose not to talk about, you know? I got you. And bro, so New York territory, so a lot of people knows or, you know, comes to the knowledge about mall talk, you know, uh, what's been over there. Um, there's another place to um, allow me to share to you. So that one here, it's the, right. The Montauk, yeah, Montauk. Yeah. Um, we have the uh, of the Roundax Mountain. So I've been able to. I'm gonna share it. You know, do some remote viewing over there. So hmm. uh, I know personally that you know any major mountains. There's activities inside and below, and you mentioned uh, power points or energy grids. So New York, ends or below New York, is a major vortex point. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, for the people that's really in the know, brother fierce, would you be able to tell them if there's any wells for people to go to cleanse? But that's really you know on the uh, knowledge or you know, uh, water pounds, you know, that people can go and cleanse or, you know, ask whatever that they want or, you know what I'm saying? Or parks where they can't, you know, speak with the spirits technically, so. Yeah, um, in terms of um, here where, um, here in um, New York, uh, I don't know of any wells here. Or uh, any natural, you know, settings or environment. Yeah, well, basically, really, to be totally honest with you, um, just getting out into uh, a forest um, or a place where you have a lot of trees, particularly like your old trees, um, any, any place in nature like that, we have old trees, you know, you can go and you can sit under those trees. Um, you can take your hands and you can put your hands on those trees uh, or hug the trees, you know, um, and you can get um, certain um, energy and healing from those trees, you know, just by hugging trees. You know, you got some people who just go around, you know, and they put their hands on trees and they just hug all different kinds of trees because different types of trees have different types of medicine. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you go into your local area and, you know, cause obviously, you know, everybody who's on here now is not in New York, um, but, you know, go into your own local area um, and find trees. Also do your research on um, what type of trees are in that area. Go to your, um, you know, go to your library and do some research and find out what kind of trees there and then once you find out what kind of trees there, you find out, um, you know, what type of medicine those trees, when I say medicine, I'm talking about, you know, from a spiritual aspect, you right. know, what type of spiritual healing or what type of um, spiritual benefits you can get 
from those different types of trees. Right, right. And uh, brother, so we're coming yeah, to an hour. So two quick questions while we're chatting. So you mentioned medicines. Would you be able to share it to the people? Because uh, just to let you know, uh, the audience, that's really people that's in the know, you know, so the power source was the yeah, galactic, you know, talk, so talking about, you know, cosmic technologies, you know, the mysteries on Earth. So would you be able to share a, um, you know, you talk, you talk about medicines, right, on a mm -hmm. spiritual level. Uh, can you share what you're allowed to disclose, you know, things so that people could, you know, search more or even, you know, study regarding this? Right. Um, well, you know, um, indigenous, uh, you know, indigenous people had all kind of um, uh, herbs um, and plants um, that they used to use um, for a myriad of different things. Um, people used um, herbs like... Um, well, say, say for instance, um, you know, herbs for, for Afro, aphrodisiacs, you know, stuff like that, you know, uh, stuff like um, uh, uh, um, ginseng. Um, they used to use um, other herbs um, for healing, like, like where, I, where my father, um, my father's from the South, you know, and a lot of, um, a lot of people back then used to use like sassafras, you know, um, for different things. Um, people would use um, uh, um, dogwood, um, wild cherry bark, um, rattlesnake and castor um, uh, concoctions, um, penny royal. Um, and, you know, they would use a whole lot of other things for, and, and of course, um, you know, for certain types of um, uh, 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 juju, you know, a lot of people would use things like um, High John the Conqueror, you know, um, for different types of medicine. Because um, now you're talking about, you know, people use different herbs to make what they call um, gree gree bags and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, when you to, now you're talking about like the hoodoo um, tradition. Um, in um, in the South, you yeah. know, in the South they have um, see what a lot of people, um, you know, down South they'll say you know somebody put a root on you, you know, um, and things like that. So you have your 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 your, your root workers, um, people who do conjure, you know, and things of that nature. And people think that those are um, like African survivals, but those are actually um, indigenous survivals. There is an African element to it, but by and large, those are um, those are indigenous. Um, those are, those are indigenous practices. Let me give you an example, uh, yeah. because what you call um, conjure root work and hoodoo among the southern quote unquote Negroes. Um, this was actually um, uh, uh, um, practices from the, the, the different um, tribes in the South. Like for instance, the Cherokees, okay? The Cherokees were uh, the conjure, you know? You can trace that back to the Cherokees because the Cherokees were big into conjure, okay? Um, and the, the, the group of the Cherokees they had a um, they had an ancient magical priestly branch of the Cherokees called the Anikutani. Okay, and they were master conjurers. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and they would um, they would do all kind of um, magic and stuff like that stuff that you uh, 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 associate with southern root working. Right. You see. Um, and so, you know, um, what they call, you know, the stuff with the, the, the gree gree bags and putting different medicines, you know, in the bags and stuff like that, you know, that's, that's, that's indigenous, 
Oh yeah, no doubt, man. That's indigenous. And what a lot of people don't know is that the um, when it comes to magic, I don't care where you go in the world, there was no magic that was higher than the magic that was practiced here in the Americas, okay? Um, even what you call like um, uh, um, in the Caribbean, you know, when you, you talk about like Obia, um, you know, in different um, Caribbean islands, you know, some islands, um, they, 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 they uh, have the Shango Baptists um, or in, in IT, you know, you have Vudun, you know, 21 divisions and stuff like that. Um, so now with Vudun, what you got to remember is that Vudun is not all African. Okay. Um, you did have, um, certain lines that were African, but you also had other lines that were Arawak. Okay. Um, like for instance, um, um, you had the uh, uh, um, the, uh, the 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 symbols that the people that you see them drawing um, with the effun on the ground, and they draw mm -hmm. those you know um, things that, that that are like sigils and things like that. That's Arawak, the Vives. Those are that's Arawak. Okay, for the, then there's there is some of it is African, but um most of the Vives are are Arawak. No okay. doubt. Yep, no doubt. And um, also, um, you know, they have um, certain lines um, that are um, Arawak as well. You know, in, um, in Vudun, they have um, different rites, you know, um, and some of those rites that they have are definitely Arawak. Um, um, and also, your screen is frozen. Can you hear me? I can hear you well, bro. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I'm looking at my screen. My screen is frozen, and your yeah. screen is frozen. But you can hear me, though. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, so, you know, I know we're running into, we can do a, you know, we can, we can always do a, a follow-up, you know, I can go into more yeah. detail. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know we can you know get into some more um, of those um, aspects of um, um, indigenous um, occultism and stuff like that. Sure. So to the people, we definitely gonna do a second part two, just like Brother Fierce just mentioned on the uh, you know the American indigenous occultism, right? So this. I say, based on personal experience, you know, in past lives, um, that things I can say to a fact that I've been singing this, you know, as a rumoring. So this goes back, back, back. And the continent of America has a lot of secrets. Bro, uh, you know, shaman practices, uh, initiations, you go to, you know, mystical events, probably a few times, dozen times, you know, in a day, on a weekly basis. Would you be able to share to the people one particular mystical or metaphysical event that had a major shift or uh, call to your life on this plane? Um... I would say um, basically um, a major shift. Um, talking about from a spiritual um, perspective. Oh, sure, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, basically, um, you know, I would say what. I would say what I was telling you earlier um, in regards to um, when we were doing the uh, indigenous um, 
um, lectures and stuff like that, um, and events. Um, those had a um, pretty, um, um, as they say, um, those were turning points um, for me, especially when the brother told me that we brought down those ancestral spirits, you know, um, that, that, you know, kind of bugged me out, you know, um, not in a bad way, you know, but later on, um, I learned that, you know, he was, he was right on point with that because hmm. I would, when I'd be doing my research, you know, I'd just be led to information, you know, that would just pop up out of nowhere, you know, um, in different places, you know. So those were definitely um, points in my life that definitely shifted and confirmed for me to be on this path. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're recalling this, this particular event, right? Mm -hmm. How did you felt on a spiritual level? You know, oh, what man. told you that? Um, you know, it, it, it felt for me um, it, it, it was a check in my spirit, you know, because again, you know, I was already um, going on that path. So, you know, it was, it, it just gave me that extra oomph that I needed, you know, to continue. Mm -hmm. And um, that was, that was, um, I never turned back. That's right, man. That's right. So we'll turn back after that. Thank you, bro. Please for sharing this. Um, I'm going to allow one question, actually. Uh, Hello. My brother, that's online because I know now it's 1 a.m. So, uh, bro, bro, yeah. uh, if you have, if you do want to, you know, to take the mic on and share your questions to Brother Fierce, please go ahead, brother. <laughs> Islam, brother, you know what I'm saying? Islam. Just want to say Islam to the ice cream, you know, because uh, you really uh, give us the good connection back to the, you know, back to the ancestral vibe over here, you know? And me and him were speaking a little bit before you come on, and some of the things we were speaking is almost the same, same thing that you were expounding on. Mm. You know what I mean? So we really give thanks. We, we don't really have a question. I mean, I mean they are listening and I say, well, I want to ask my intelligent question, you know? Yeah. But we just yeah. are taking the knowledge right now and just are matching it where we know. And we are say, you know, we just give thanks for the I really bring out that. And you know what I'm saying? You might come and do a part two. Yes. That would, yes. That, that would agree it. That would agree it, you know? Especially when you were explaining about how they were transporting the people all across this side. From, yep. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. From the yep. mainland to the islands, from the islands to the mainland. Exactly. That's one set of people. Exactly. One set of people. I mean, and go ahead, brother, please. Yeah, because um, let me give you another example. Um, like for instance, um, so we talk about the Yamasee, how a lot of yeah. the Yamasee yeah. Ian brought to Jamaica, right? So now they call them maroon too when they when they brought them there. Because they said the maroons are in Florida too, right? That's right. That's right. Florida, Georgia. That's right. Know. That but they were the Yamasee maroon, same people. The same people. That's right. Because now check this out. So the Yamasi, right? Um, so you familiar with the Gullah and the Geechee people? To a, to a, little, to a, little, a little degree, yes. Okay. Yes, so yes, now, yes. The Gullah and the Geechee people. So, you know, we know that there is an element of the Gullah and Geechee who talk about, you know, um, coming from Africa, you know, things yes. like that. I don't deny that. Um, but what is overlooked in regards to the Gullah and Geechee is the fact that also the Yamasee Indians say that the Gullahs are um, Yamasees. You see it. You see And then I'm like they're up in uh, Belize, I think too, some of them, right? And that they were is. saying like, they said some of their ancestry came from down where you were saying, Venezuela and these, from the southern more part of the, the mainland. Cause there's a southern mainland and a northern mainland. Right. And they were coming like in, in you know, in previous time, pre-Columbian pre times, people, we're back and forth. 
Okay. Yeah, I wasn't um, I wasn't familiar with um, with um, that aspect in terms of um, you said coming from um, Belize. Yeah, because I was watching uh, something about the the Gola, the Gola people, mm -hmm. and the, um, they were they were it was in Belize, and they were mm -hmm. making reference to them. Wow. Okay. And some of the other islands, right? And then they were talking about the ancestry of those people, and mm -hmm. they said those people were coming from from South America, like okay. how you were explaining earlier, how they came up from, you know, from near Venezuela. He said it was only a boat ride away and these things, right? Right, right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's what I was, yeah. So like yeah. you were saying, it was the yeah. same was, people. Right, yeah, I was talking about um, my mother's island um, in terms Saint of- St. Vincent. Uh, Venezuela. Yeah, St. Vincent. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. See. Um, so that's just, you know, that's just right right there you know south america's university. right but remember even you said earlier how they um they left from that island and we're going to different places all around right. that, the, so the, that the, could the, be the how they reached up to belize and these places right and honduras Garifuna. and all this you know the, the garifuna they, they call see. them the garifuna see it see it yeah if you look do do um do a google search on the garifuna um they spell it g-a-r yeah man i-f-u-n-a yeah, man, I, for real, because they that, that I think those are the ones I was referring. Actually, to be correct okay. myself, I think those are the ones that I meant when I was talking about Belize. Right, right, right. Yeah. But uh, speaking of like what you're saying, um, because I played in a music band with a lot of um Dominicans, not from okay. Dominic, like from Dominica. Oh, Dominica. Yeah. Yeah, Dominica, yeah. Saint Lucia, and these places, mm -hmm. and they were looking at themselves like they're Caribs. Okay, right, 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 like right. They, you know, right. and you know, so they were. They don't really have that slave history, like right. how you're saying. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They look at themselves like they're from there. That's true. And even when you go see the old pictures, they got on the, you know, they're making the treaties and stuff, right? They got on their turban and all that. It's, That's right. it's right there. It's it's undeniable. It's, right it's undeniable. That's right. <laughs> you know? It's, it's undeniable. undeniable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now with the Gullah, so now check this out. So the Gullah and the Geechee, um, if you look at, um, so the Yamasee say that, you know, the Gullah and Geechee and, and the Yamasee and Seminoles are, are, are like all the people. You Jeez. see what I'm saying? Um, also, so if that be the case, you look at those people, like for instance, if you take a Gullah, a, 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 someone from the, the, the Gullah and Geechee nation and you put them in a Caribbean setting you couldn't really tell them apart if you hear them speaking, unless you yeah. really, unless you really, you know, uh, you know, you listening. know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> For the most part, you really can't really distinguish, you know, just on right. the surface. Yeah, there's a lot of people here, Saint Vincent people talking, and they swear they're Jamaican, right? right. From different you know islands. what I mean? Yeah. Because if they don't, they don't know. But like right. you're saying, yeah, you know, exactly what you're saying. Well, right now, I'm talking about the Gullah, the Gullah and the Geechee in in the true, uh, true, true. The South in, in yes, Georgia and uh, uh, Florida, Georgia, yeah, Southern that, Georgia. That I want to ask you a question about that area, though. You know how, um, like up here, we're up in Canaan Line up here, right? Oh, yeah, Canaan Line. Okay. Yeah, I'm up in Canaan Line, bro. I'm up I got, in. Uh, I got family it? there too. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, man. I'm up in uh, near territory of uh, Ottawa. Okay. Uh, Ottawa, Gatineau, right? Not too far from Toronto, near Montreal, right in that region there. Mm. That's where I, that's where I'm at, you know. So there's a Gonquin up here. Up here, it's a Gonquin. Exactly. You know what I mean, even the Parliament building up here, it's it's an unceded. It's not a secret. It's an unceded um, a Gonquin land still. Mm -hmm. Like the, the government don't really own that. It's mm -hmm. a, a perpetual lease or whatever, right? Okay. But um, just coming across research over the years, there's a lot of the, the, you know a Gonquin's a language that was went all the way down into southern Florida. And even I've seen pictures that they're showing Algonquin, but down in Southern Florida, like the dark, dark skin looking, not looking like the ones we see up here, looking like us, right? So I'm just wondering if you have any, um, you have any more knowledge about the Algonquin language or so-called uh, Indians in the Southern part. You're down in like, you know, Florida, those kind of places. Okay, um, well now in, in Florida, um that was originally the um the Timaquas, um as well as now you also in Florida you also had um Arawaks. 
Okay. Florida as well. Not only that, but the Arawaks, um, I've even seen certain documents saying that the Arawaks were as far into the mainland as um, as the Carolinas. See, it. see. It. You know, um, I, and I have, you know, when we do the next um, lecture um, with, with the brother Taino AG, um, I'll pull those documents um, on the Arawaks um, here, um, you know, in Florida um, and, and, and coming down the East Coast. Um, in terms of languages um, and the people in the North and um, people in the South, uh, well, you know, the Cherokees, um, the Cherokees were originally um, a part of that. Um, they were uh, they were actually a part of the um, the, the the Mohawks. Okay. Those those um, the, that 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 Iroquois Confederacy. Yeah, you know. Of course, now, we, have, we have that up here. Like we're right at. We're right at the border there, Cornwall and all that. That's all, you know, uh, Mohawk. Right. But they split. They split, yeah. um, you know, at a point. You know, they, they they had a division and they started to split. And it's crazy, like, up here, like, if you look at the, we always say it, you know, we have the Mohawk flag. That's a staple up here, right? Mm -hmm. in our, where we are. And, you know, the it's a brother. That's a brother on that flag. Thank like, you. In terms of Thank complexion. You. Yep. If you, you look mean? right on there, that's a, that's a brown skin, like me and your complexion. Straight up, they don't yep. look like none of the, you know, it's funny thing. I one time I ran into this, um, I was in a line somewhere and they were calling by name and they wanted the, the name or whatever. So I, you know, I used my nationality card, whatever L, right? Okay. And then they called this this native woman and she turned to me and she goes, you're L, I'm L2. She was from Inuit, from up Inuk, from up north. And she was an L2. Mm -hmm. and, and she looked at me and she says, man, my grandfather's darker than you. <laughs> and I remember that day it blew it blew me away because I am an L yeah I did you know so I was like for real <laughs> like I, you know like but but it's crazy it, it's crazy and the it's connection funny. you know yeah it's, and and it's funny you say that because um in like I mentioned earlier Jose Pimienta Bay's book yes yes uh, Othello the new children in the new world world yes um he talks about how you know they had um an ill clan up there See. Uh, with the um. He said with the, I think he said with the Senecas. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Yeah, they, they had an ill clan. Okay, okay. See? Yeah, so you know, and like I always that's, tell that's them along the lines of you know the person that you met up there. For real, you know. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I I always tell them like um if you're up here where we are in Canaan, and you leave me and you leave same time and I'm going to Vancouver so called, and we're going to the islands. I'm going to get to the islands before you get to Vancouver. Hmm. But yet you're going to say that I went somewhere different and you're in the same place just because you're going latitudinal, right? Exactly. That's fiction. Exactly. We're in the same place. True. The same way you can say we're in Vancouver, it's the same way I can, just because I, if I'm indigenous in, in the islands, mm -hmm. I'm indigenous anywhere I go, anywhere I go, for Earth for that matter. Right. You know what I mean? But like up here, they only recognize... You know, or they say they only recognize, not that we need them to recognize us, obviously, right? Exactly. But they 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 say they only recognize the Inuit, the native, so-called First Nation people, and the Métis, right? Mm -hmm. But we're indigenous to the Americas. That's a fact. That's a so fact. anywhere we are. So, like, th th that's our premise. Like, this, we're here in our land. We're in America. We're not have to argue with you about it. That's a, there's not even debate yeah. about yeah. it. You know, you know, I'm average indigenous more, period. That's it. That's it. Yeah, man. We, we, we are, you know, nobody has a superior claim to us, you know, That's it. Whether, whether it be those of us who are indigenous from the land or whether it be those Africans that came over here um, in trade ships. You know, uh, when you talk about the Malian um, expeditions, you know, under um, Abubakari and um, Ansa Musa, you know, um, all of those people were here before the, anybody else was here, whether it be those for real, for real, for real, for real. homegrown for real. or those who came, you know, you had those who came later, you know, and they are as well here before anybody else, except for us who are, you know, homegrown, of course. 
Sí, sí, sí. Yeah, man, for real, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I love, you know, I love the work you more are doing, man. Islam gives so much thanks. Thank and, you, you yeah. know, 12 o'clock at night is worth it. I'm stay, I stay up and I, I'm glad, I'm very glad that um, I was able to, you know, to Likewise. partake, you know? Yeah, Likewise. man. I like, it, love, I, like you know? that, I like the work that y'all are doing up there in Canaan land. Too. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you should travel up here sometime. Sure. And you know, and you hook up with Grand Chief Kujo, maybe AGL. Sure. <laughs> if you're, you know, come on. Okay, anytime. We'd love, okay. love to have you, brother. Like, you know, we love Morris, man. We love active Morris. Yeah. It is what it is, you know, Noble Jurali. That he's the man. Oh yeah. Islam. Oh, yeah. Islam. Peace. Peace. Thank you, brother Alfonso. So that was a good, you know, session of building. Oh know. yeah. Yeah, so Brother Fierce, uh, we're coming to an end. So I just don't want to say to the people, I came to uh, the knowledge of Brother Fierce works actually through Toriano. Mm, that's my boy. To Toriano was on, you know, Brother Fierce um, function it's called the, the Red Rose East. You know, that's at the moment. And that was around, you know, 2018. So peace to you, because I know that show here, you're promoting, you know, the indigenous. Yeah. Owners, you know, so would you mind of taking a minute of sharing this to the people? Sure. Yeah, so um, the Red Road East is my um, television program. Uh, it comes on, on BronxNet, uh, which is the public access um, TV show in the Bronx. And I've been doing that show uh, since 2015. Um, again, now, the before I had the Red Road East, you know, I was, I've been on YouTube um, long before the Red Road East. Um, but basically, the Red Road East is indigenous, um, and I'm using that term loosely, of course, you know, I'm, you know, just using it loosely for clarity's sake for all the viewers. An indigenous uh, television program uh, dedicated to archiving and preserving the history, legacy, and culture of um, the original peoples of the Americas, um, particularly the East Coast and the Caribbean, okay? Um, and before I did the, before I had the Red Road East show, um, I had a series, well, I had a research team called the American Mound Builders Research Team. Now we're talking at the beginning of the 2000s. Um, this is long before, you know, any Aboriginal movement or anything like that that you have today. We're talking like early, early 2000s, you know, like 2006, 2007, you know, um, and I had a series called Black Indians Debunked. And it, you know, really um, had a lot of, you know, it got a lot of play on YouTube. A lot of those videos um, are not even on YouTube anymore. I don't know what happened to the videos. I guess the information was too powerful at the time. They took a lot of videos down. Matter of fact, I just came across one video that somebody reposted uh, one of the old videos from like 2006 or 2007, one of the old, old videos, somebody reposted it. And um, other, if it wasn't for that repost, I wouldn't, I would never even, because I, I don't even have a copy. You know, a lot of that stuff is just gone, you know, but you can still find um, the, um, you can still find some of the old videos um, if you go to American Mound Builders uh, research team. You can look that up on YouTube and you'll find some of those old videos. Uh, just look for Black Indians debunked, any of those buzzwords and you'll find some, some of those videos. Um, but yes, I also, um, I'm also a Washita. Um, I, um, I got nationalized through the Washita's back in the days. Um, you know, I did lectures. Um, uh, with the Washita uh, here in New York, in different places and stuff like that, and um, um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much uh, one of the pioneers 
of what you call the Aboriginal movement today. You know, talking about long before Dane Calloway or any of those guys, um, I'm one of the pioneers. And matter of fact, when I first started doing this whole thing with the Moorish and Native Connection and stuff like that, it was only like maybe, again, now, you know, there was always individuals who had this information, but we're talking about like as a, as, as a paradigm is what I'm talking about, you know. Um, there's only like a couple of other people who were doing it when I first started, you know, it's a, a brother named um, Robert Strong Rivers. Um, he was doing it like around the same time when I was doing it, you know. Um, you know, um, I had become aware of his work, um, you know, um, you know, later, you know, I was already, I was already, you know, doing that stuff locally in the mm. community and stuff like that, you know, and later on somebody said, oh, there's somebody else, you know, on the, you know, say on the West Coast, I think he was on, on the West Coast, say, and then he's doing the same thing you're doing. I was like, oh, really? Wow. And, you know, I looked him up and, you know, sure enough, you know, um, but it wasn't a, you know, wasn't a whole lot, you know, of course, you know, always had Moors, you know, um, you know, who were um, touching on the subject, but I'm talking about like going in like really deep and, you know, with the connection and stuff like that. It wasn't too many other people doing it when I was doing it. Got you. So, yeah. Thank you, brother, for so uh, we're going to have a second part, actually. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, so. <laughs> Informations <laughs> for our people, you know, here with the uh, with families of South America, the islands, you know. So, yep. do you want to check this? Because good information for the people, and we're going to tackle as well, you know, some magic. Because uh, Brother first mentioned that you know part of his uh, family from his father's side are from the south. So we do going to tackle this, you know, more okay. today. So Brother Fierce, man. I appreciate, man, the time that you took. You know what I mean? Likewise, man. I, you know what you had to go through, but we're, I'm glad, actually. You know? Yeah, yeah. Looking up, you know, and building. So. Definitely. I, I I tried my best. I was I was bobbing and weaving through traffic, you know. <laughs> you know, bobbing, you know, just trying to trying to make it, man, trying to get here. <laughs> it's not easy in New York, man. It's 10 cars, you know, every. Yeah, man, bless your love, give thanks, Bridget, you know? So yeah, bless your love yeah, again. Wise, <laughs> wise, wise. We had Brother Fierce today's session 20. And just to let you know, it's 1 a.m. in 30. So, you know, whenever it's time to build, you know, with some, you know, automores, you know, prepping the uh, indigenous paradigm, you know, that's quite important. Then, no matter what the time. So thank you, brother. We appreciate this, man. Yeah, thank you. And thank you um, to the other brother. Um, what's the other brother's name on the, on the line? Um, Islam, Alfonso Jamor L. Alfonso Jamor L. Yo, nice to meet you, brother. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah man. For real. Give our thanks, man. Bless. Yeah, thanks. See the eye again, you know? Yeah, thanks. Likewise. Islam. Islam. Yet again, brother, fierce truth seeker. Bro, I'll let you the last word. Any things that you would want to share in this uh, session, especially in these times, whatever it's, you know, uh, metaphysical, uh, spirit, spiritual. Let's go ahead, bro. Yeah, in terms of um, metaphysical and spiritual, um, I say it's, it's really good to connect with your, your ancestors, you know, um, whether that be, you know, you, you, you're doing meditation, um, you know, in silence, you know, get yourself a, you can get yourself a, like a, um, a candle like a purple candle you know be in silence um you know just talk to your ancestors you know um you know also um you know there's certain um you know certain things that people can do in terms of you know learning about um talismans you know and things of that nature that you can keep on your person you know, to protect you. Study magic. I make arms when we're young. Yeah. Um, talismans. Um, also, um, you know, burn your um, burn ancestral money. You know, learn about ancestral money. Um, that's real good for connecting with your ancestors. Um, you know, we can talk about that another time. You know, but um, just start making that connection. Yeah. 
go out in nature. Definitely go out in nature, you know. Talk to the plants, talk to the trees, you know, keep plants in your house, you know. A lot of things you can do, you know. Um, learn about words of power, you know, um, things of that nature. You know, we can get into that another time as well. You know. No doubt, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So then again, Brother Pierce, truth seeker in the building. So thank you, brother. Hey. All right. Guys, I thank you for having me on the show, you know. Honor, we, we made it happen. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I say, you know, to be continued. Right on.